Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Nog Blinder V Traffic Cobb LED Bicycle Rear Taillight. Nog is well known for the unique and attractive bike headlights and taillights. The Blinder V series continues that legacy by incorporating their popular design elements with the latest Cobb LED technology. What we have here is the Blinder V Traffic, which has a traffic style three block LED illumination pattern. This is also available in the Blinder V Bolt variation, which has nearly identical specs, but has a lightning bolt pattern to it, which is quite unique. In terms of packaging, it's also very clever here. You can see the light is encased in this little plastic backing. You can see the front of it with a sticker on top to show the illumination pattern. And then on the side, you can actually peek all the way through. You can see the mount, the incorporated USB, and all the cool features. Specs are printed on the back as well as underneath. So I'll go ahead and take it out of the box and we'll go over these specs on here. So retail price on this is $49.95. It is a 100 lumen max output, so more than enough for daytime riding. And in a lot of ways, it's an evolution of their Mob V, which has the same aerodynamic sleek profile. You have a Cobb LED design, so that means you have circuit onboard technology. And that means you have a bunch of little LEDs actually placed directly onto the circuit board. So they all illuminate together and it gives you a much more uniform and attractive illumination pattern. Go ahead and pull this out of the box. So it has eight output modes. You can do the three different blocks in various constant modes as well as flashing patterns. And what's cool about this is you also have an integrated USB cable or USB connector directly in here. So you don't need a cable. You just plug this in directly into your port. In terms of what comes with it, obviously you get the light, the USB port directly on here. You have the second part of the rubber mount design. And then you also get two different options for that strap. So depending on what your handlebar diameter is, you have the medium one installed. You also have a short and then a longer one. So that'll accommodate different bike styles. You also have the quick start guide that's kind of buried underneath this plastic. Now let's take a look at the weight of the light. So the light with the medium length strap that comes in at 40 grams, so quite light. Now let's go over the fit and finish of the Nog Blinder V. This was designed to have a V profile so you can see how it kind of tapers in and should hide behind any seat post for a very sleek look. Nog offers this in two variations. We have the traffic version. So you can see if I turn this on, it has three blocks of LEDs that illuminate in different patterns. So it's very reminiscent of a traffic light where you have red, green, yellow. They also have the bolt version, which has a lightning bolt, which is kind of a unique spin and similar to the other variations they have on the other lights. This is an evolution of the Mob V. So if you look at the Mob V and you look at this, you can see a lot of similarities. With this one, you get a full Cobb LED design. What that means is you have individual LEDs all on the circuit board. So it's very sleek and it gives you that glow. So it's much more uniform when it's on versus more of the single surface mounted LEDs that you see with the previous version. It's also a sleeker and much higher output. So it's 100 lumens versus the about 45 that the previous version offered. You also have a raised lens here, so you can see when you turn it on, a little bit of it peeks out the edge, and that gives you side visibility. So most of your accidents are gonna happen at a side angle where a car doesn't see you, so this helps you be more visible at awkward angles or intersections. The interface itself is a one-button design. So I wish it was a little bit better placed, but it's actually right here on top, and it's a little bit awkward to press because you tend to press the raised portions kind of on an incline, so if you press it and hold it, it will turn on. And then you press it again or hold it again, it'll turn off. It has mode memory, so it remembers which mode I was on. And then when it's on, you can cycle through the eight available modes. So quite a few options here, probably too many options, but you have various flash patterns, various constant modes, and they all have different run times. And then you simply cycle through, hold it again. And then mode memory means when I turn it back on, I don't have to cycle through and find the one again. It will go exactly to where it was. So nice feature. The mount on here is also quite unique. So it works with both arrow seat posts and round ones. 
And you can see it does that by having this elastic design. So you can see how it'll flex. So it'll go wider for a round C-post and then more narrow with this little center cutout. So a nice design feature. It blends a standard rubber strap with this polycarbonate clasp. So instead of just having a rubber strap and two hooks, like you see with a lot of taillights, this actually uses a little clasp on here that you pull up and over and locks into place. So a little more secure. And you can see with the different length O-rings, you can do larger diameter or smaller diameter. So if you have an arrow set up, you probably want the wider one. If you have a more small one, you can try the different lengths. The other thing you'll notice is that there's no USB connector. It's actually just built in directly. So this is really cool. It's a USB-A. And with this design, you just slide it in to your port and you can charge it. So you don't have to worry about cables or anything like that. It also has a low battery indicator on here and a charging indicator. So to the right of these, this will turn red. And then when you're charging it, the left one will go red or green, depending on whether it's charging or done charging. So a pretty simple interface and very sleek overall design. The Blinder V has eight different output modes to choose from. You have two constant modes, a high constant, a low constant. Low constant is good for seven hours and 20 lumens. Then you have various flash modes that highlight the three different blocks in different orders. So low flash will keep the center on and flash the outer ones. High flash does the full 100 lumens for seven hours and does all three. Fading will kind of fade in from the outer to the inner. Pulse does a similar thing, but pulses it. So it gradually goes up and then turns off. Feathering flash is a really fun one. So it goes up and down. And then the highest runtime of 50 hours is for eco flash, which is just a little bit of a slower flash. In terms of visibility on the road here, you can see some daytime footage. And actually it works quite well. You can see the light from a fair distance away with that wide LED face. You have a nice uniform distribution and that's great for lower distances. The one downside of this light is because it has such a big LED face, it's not very focused. So something like a light in motion or Bontrager Ion, which has a single LED and a small reflector, those are visible from maybe a mile away. This one would be limited to shorter distances. That said, it's still a very effective light and has a nice uniform glow to it that looks great on urban bikes or even road bikes. And with the simple mounting, it's easy to put on and take off. What we have here is quite a few options. This is the Moon Sport Cerberus. So it's a three cob LED design. And you can see it has three strips, so one on each side and one down the middle. So pretty unique looking and gives you a very unique uh, pattern as well. This is also designed to fit flush against a C post and it has a similar angled or almost ratcheting design with the mount, which accommodates both arrow and standard C post. With the Moon Sport, it's a lot more complicated. The interface has what they call a variable lumen system where you can actually adjust each mode. And it's a little bit much, honestly. I wish it would kind of pare it down more. Visually, you can see the NOG has a more wide and uniform look. So this will catch your eye a little bit more, but it won't be as visible from further distances because it's less focused. Speaking of focused lights, the Via Pro Smart here is one of those lights that are very narrow beam, so single LED, and they've really designed this to be visible from a very long distance away. So it has a USB port directly built in as well, but because of the form factor, it's a little bit easier to use when you're charging. So you can see you can just plug this directly in and it's long and narrow versus tall. So this one, you, you can only really place in one direction and you might have some access issues while the Via is longer. But again, if you want something for urban riding or just a bigger front face, uh, the NOG does that. So different design elements. If you want to be visible from further distances like road cycling, you'd want something more focused. That's similar to the Bontrager Flare RT. So this is about 100 lumens as well. I believe about 90. Again, single LED. And you can see it's very focused which means you don't really see it that much from certain angles, but you can see it from very far distances while the NOG here is great for more urban riding, city commuting, where you want a big front face that really catch your eye. So you can see the difference there just side by side. The Bontrager has a lot more features though, such as Bluetooth connectivity. So you can actually see your battery status while the NOG just has standard cob LEDs, no brake sensor or anything like that. Uh, the Bullet 200 is also a good option. Obviously, it has a dual LED setup as well. So you have two rings, which is really cool. And then this almost mushroom style to it. Standard USB port, 
a lot bulkier. So the nice thing about the Nog is if you have a road bike, this will kind of tuck underneath it while this sticks out. The upside of the bullet is because it has this bulging shape, you can see this from almost any angle. So even from behind, because it actually sticks out. So you definitely want to pick the one that matches your style and has enough runtime for your riding. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the Nog Blinder V. What we like about it is that it's a minimalist design. It's a nice large LED face with a cop design. You also have a cleverly integrated USB-A connector directly into the mount. It's really a nice feature so you don't need any charging cable to worry about. You just plug it directly into your USB port. And with the three block design of this traffic variation, you have unique and eye-catching flash modes. So they illuminate in different orders and patterns which really catches your eye. Some of the cons for the taillight is the fact that the mount can't be angled. It's parallel with your seat post, which is always angled backwards slightly. Also, the button placement can be difficult to press. It's fairly narrow and on a little bit of an inclined plane, so you have to be careful where you actually touch. And the rubber coating on the rear of the housing tends to really attract dust and dirt, so it's hard to keep clean. Taking everything into account, we give the taillight a 9.2 out of 10. It's very attractive and cleverly designed rear taillight. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclists.com as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclists. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.